In this session, we'll look at the way self-test software helps you prepare for the actual A plus 22901 test experience. Here's a question. You want to add a pair of 80211 AC wireless access points to your network. You get a second opinion from a coworker. You'll still need to do your own research. He brings up the issue of 80211 wireless access points scattered around that would generate all band interference. What's the logical course of action? From the answers, choose the best two that apply. Adding a provision to replace older devices is always a decent option if it fixes your problem. Clearly, the number of devices involved in a replacement would change the viability of your plan. Your coworker is not as knowledgeable as you thought. Here's something to look at. He cites all band interference from the 802.11a devices. Now you need to know some things about the 802.11 and 802.11ac. Like they both operate in the 5 GHz band. They both use the same modulation method and the 20 MHz bandwidth of the 802.11a can be avoided entirely by the 160 MHz bandwidth of the 802.11ac. And all band interference is impossible in 802.11a. It looks like you can get your plan together and move forward. So your correct answers are, your coworker is not as knowledgeable as you thought, and get your plan together and move forward. Here's your next question. Of the IEEE specifications listed, which has a maximum transmission rate of 11 megabits per second? Looking at the detractors, we see 80211, which maxes out at 2 megabits per second. Next is 80211A, quite fast at 54 megabits per second, but expensive. Now the 80211B, at a max of 11 megabits per second, it had a more consumer-friendly price point and quickly took over the market. 802.11g hit the scene with 54 megabits per second speed and backward compatibility with 802.11b as they both use the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. Your correct response here is 802.11b. The last question in this group is, you're running a cable for a gigabit network. What cable type will you use? Choose all that apply. We can see from the responses, CAT3 can support a maximum speed of 10 megabits per second. CAT5 is not recommended in gigabit applications. It supports a bandwidth of 100 megahertz or 10 base TX. CAT5e is capable of supporting higher throughput. CAT6 supports bandwidth of 1000 MHz or 1 gigabit per second. It's the best choice due to the construction which decreases the amount of crosstalk on the cable. CAT6a supports 10 gigabit Ethernet. If you were only allowed one answer, it would be CAT6, but since you are allowed more than one choice, CAT5 is the second best solution. Answer this by choosing CAT5e and CAT6. Be sure to check out the Surf Blaster YouTube channel to see the performance-based types and more.